Hello everyone. I'm sitting here a few hours after having returned from uh, Mr. Benji Steinbock, Zichrin Rachel, Ben Yomin Akiva, Ben Shloma, Levaya. And uh, I want to start off first by acknowledging this uh, tragic loss which has uh, really been felt across the community. Uh, Benji was a, a gubba in our shul. Um, he was a larger than life character. He was uh, popular. He touched so many, um, as uh, evidenced by the 1,000 people who joined his Leviah via Zoom. And um, he was someone who really just wanted to make people happy. Um, incredible acts of personal kindness, many of which have only come to light since his, uh, since his departure. Um, someone who displayed care and consideration to so many and touched really so many. He, he was dedicated to uh, Rabbonim, to his Shurim and his Torah, but I think above all he uh, loved his family, his children, and they knew it and they felt it. And uh, whilst there's still much to digest, um, I do want to take this opportunity to uh, wish uh, Nechama and condolences to uh, Stephanie, his wife, and to his uh, lovely children, Sammy, Gabriella and Eitan and uh, David, um, our thoughts and the community's thoughts are really with you in this painful and difficult time. I want to uh, share a thought around uh, the Sedra of Yisro, and it's, it's a fascinatingly constructed Sedra because, um, as already indicated by its name, it opens with a rather technical story of the arrival of Yisro, the father-in-law of Moshe, who uh, watches what's going on in the camp and uh, tells Moshe you're not structuring the leadership model and uh, judicial model properly, you need uh, to bring more judges on board, otherwise it's simply not tenable, it doesn't work, and he suggested uh, a revamp of how everything was run, and Moshe remarkably accepts his advice. And then this is followed by uh, perhaps one of the most central episodes in the whole Torah, the incredible description of the uh, giving of the Torah of the Ten Commandments, the Aseris Adibris. Now, whether the Yisro episode with the little remodeling of uh, the justice system and leadership system that he put in place really took place before the giving of the Torah, or actually took place afterwards, and for other reasons, as Rashi explains in Muktam Ochab Torah, for some literary reason it's put first. Um, either way, it's a little strange that this is the introduction to the giving of the Torah, that it's uh, introduced by uh, Yisro's addition to the Torah, as suggested by his very name, Yeser, to uh, add and uh, increase the Torah. What's the message behind this? And I think there's several thoughts um, here to think about. And the first is, as pointed out by the Nativ, that even a great rabbinical leader, even the greatest rabbinical leader of all time, Moshe Rabbeinu, the teacher for all times, um, can't achieve everything by himself. And a Yisro, an outsider, a, his father-in-law, a, a non-Jew, who comes into Klal Yisrael, certainly a, a layman by any be definition, is able to point out to Moshe something that he hadn't been aware of, and show Moshe a better way of doing things, and Moshe accepted this. And perhaps this is the, uh, the best introduction to Kabbalah Satorah, the best introduction to the giving of the Torah, and therefore deliberately placed by the Torah at this point to tell us we're about to receive the Asayas Adibras. We're about to see Moshe in uh, full glory as the Makabal HaTorah, as the one who transmits the Torah to the Jewish people, but first there has to be preceded by something, by recognition that even a Moshe needs to have a Yisro in his life. Even a Moshe can't do everything, as pointed out by the commentaries, even a Moshe has to have the support system in place, and that has to be uh, directed to him and indicated to him and taught by him by a lay leader, by Yisro, who is an outsider and yet has this insight. A model of the what it means to be a Torah leader, the role of Torah leadership, and preceded by the Torah to the very giving of the Torah to perhaps tell us what the Torah is and yet what else is needed. But then interestingly, even though Moshe accepts Yisro's advice, he tweaks it a little bit. Because what Yisro tells him that the division of labor should be any large matter involving a significant sum of money should come to you, and any smaller matter involving smaller sums of money, perhaps, 
Yishbetuhem, you should go to the outsourced judiciary body that you've now built up around yourself. However, when Moshe actually introduces this and institutes it, he accepts, broadly speaking, their advice, but he divides things differently. And he says, Adova HaKosha, that which is difficult and uh, challenging, Yoviel Moshe, should come to Moshe, Chaladova HaKotom Yishbetun Heim, and anything which is smaller qualitatively in terms of the challenge should go to the lower level judges. In other words, whilst Yisro thought of it in terms of a large sum and a small sum, Moshe realized that it's the difficult cases that have to go to the top and the simpler cases that can go lower down, even though they may involve larger sums of money. And, and there's an important lesson here, I think, not just in leadership, but in all relationships, not to confuse Gadol with Kasha, not to confuse that which is large and maybe in an objective sense involves significant sums and very large considerations, but perhaps not recognizing that which is difficult and that perhaps which is important to the person in question. And so on, often in life, we think about what matters in an objective sense, and sometimes that's important, so that's only in terms of our priorities and our focuses. But sometimes we need to think about what's kasher, what's difficult, what's really heavy and significant and complex for the person who's involved in it. For us always to think in terms of the support we offer and the givingness that we give and our relationships with friends, with neighbours, with children, with parents, with spouses, to think, is this gadol? Maybe yes, maybe not. Is it large and significant in an absolute sense? May well be, but may not be. But is it kasher? Is it difficult? Is it important to the person in question? And if so, it needs all the attention I can give it. It needs the top of the judicial system, the best I have in the relationship, to express this act of care. Because true care is knowing what's important to the person, what's kasher, what's difficult, not just what's gadol. And therefore, again, this would seem to be an important lesson before Matan Torah. We're about to get the Mat Torah, we're about to get that which is absolute importance, but also remember that which is kasher, remember that which is important to the person. And who gives the advice? Who tells Moshe how to change the system? And the advice is accepted by the greatest Torah leader ever, Yisro and Moshe, because a Moshe can recognize the insight that a Yisro can give him. I wish us all a good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom, and may this Shabbos bring Shalom and Menucha and comfort to all of us after a difficult week. Be well, good Shabbos.